How much of our planet's history do we really know? We are about to look at an unsolved mystery of Earth science. Aware geologists still wonder why we don't find relics of rocky landscape in the ancient layers. Our investigation will guide us to look at one of the most intriguing paradoxes of geology. Any eroded surface covered with new sediment deposit is named an unconformity. Modern time unconformities are recorded in many rocky landscapes. During the ancient ages of the Earth, unconformities were at odds with the ones forming today. It looks as if ancient Earth conditions never recorded any rocky landscape, but just surfaces carved mostly flat. How do geologists solve this mystery? Surprisingly enough, the question has been neglected. For the first step in our investigation, let's look at modern rocky landscapes. Have you ever noticed the stair steps and rib shapes formed in rock layers? Layers tipped at an angle may produce what we call cuesta. Sometimes you see plateaus with steep edges. We named them mesa. If you look on a smaller scale, you will also find miniature cuesta and mesa on the bedrock. So, even a very flat, rocky surface is shaped into stair steps. What process carves these rib shapes and stair steps? Clearly, the nature of each layer controls these landforms. Oxygen, carbon dioxide and water alter any rock minerals. Even granite rocks are weathered down into particles. Each type of mineral has its own resistance to chemical weathering, and each rock layer reacts differently to wind and watercourse abrasion. We name this effect differential erosion. Even the powerful abrasion of waves keeps producing differential erosion. And this effect is most remarkable in layered rocks, like sedimentary rocks. Geologists describe them as stratified rocks because they are built with strata, a name for layers. Sedimentary rocks cover 75% of our continents, up to an average thickness of 2.7 kilometers. Now you know why the rib patterns of differential erosion are everywhere on our landscapes. Sedimentary rocks are formed by successive accumulation of soft sediment deposits. Under certain conditions, layers would become hardened or indurated into rock. We call this process lithification. The chemistry of the water solution in the sediment is one important factor in this process. Lithification happens mostly to the layers buried under thick accumulation. Imagine thick layers exposed to erosion. 
The upper soft layers would erode without rib forms, but more into patterns of streams. When the erosion reaches the level of indurated layers, sedimentary rocks would be carved into differential erosion. An example, a river cutting into soft sediment produces a channel with rounded banks. If the river carves deep down to the indurated bedrock, the banks would be eroded differentially into stair steps. Everywhere we see examples of erosion reaching the level of lithified layers. For that reason, the earth is adorned with differential erosion. In the Paleozoic and Mesozoic sedimentary rocks, we observe so many channels of erosion. Surprisingly enough, these channels have no stair-step banks. It seems as if water streams were eroding only through soft sediments. Stair-step topographies start to appear in the Cenozoic period. Geologists also find channels carved rounded into hard rock, like this Gneiss at Albersweiler in Germany. But these are dramatic events. In modern times, such a phenomenon may be caused by violent avalanche debris following volcanic eruption. So you have all these weird unconformities uh, all around the world with this lack of differential erosions. Um, but of course, you have, uh, you have many cases where you see clearly differential erosions. One of the f famous, most famous uh, unconformities is surely Sicar Point in uh, Scotland. Uh, there you will see some uh, differential weathering but not as much as we were expecting to see, like the modern rocks. At the same time, we have to be very cautious before to emit any kind of uh, general statement. Uh, any geologist have his own perspective where, when we are on the field. Uh, for example, someone may say, oh, in Paleozoic and Mesozoic time, most of the unconformities are quite flat. Uh, but in one sense, uh, you may find in many areas where it's quite rounded, of course, it's quite depleted of differential erosions. What is important is to exchange our different perspective and to keep on with the dialogue. And that's the purpose of uh, this uh, documentaries. Geodoxa is a gathering of uh, ideas and correspondence from people uh, on two different continents, North America and Europe. And uh, we have people from government office, from uh, provincial or state geological surveys, from universities, uh, even staff in uh, mining explorations. And we try to exchange on uh, these topics with different perspective. There's always someone asking uh, to visit an outcrop and to film. And uh, th there's much work to do. Uh, we have been filming for about 10 years. And we still have <laughs> 
10 more years uh, on our wish list in terms of uh, outcrops, uh, remote areas, or, or a huge field uh, where you have um, unconformities or uh, ancient paleo landscape. What come out of these dialogues are two important concepts. Uh, First, a continent needs to be eroded extensively into a kind of peneplain, but the sort of peneplain that bear no differential erosions. The second concept is when the sea transgress over the land, every uh, rocky landscape will be transformed into a rocky seashore, and uh, every soft ground will be transformed into a, a beach, like a sandy beach. For decades, we know well this paradox. Uh, when we look at Paleozoic and uh, Mesozoic unconformities, we don't find too many uh, uh, rocky seashore or even shingle beach. Ancient rocky seashore are quite sparse. Uh, Marcus Johnson was uh, quite clear uh, about uh, this topic. Um, he went all around the world, try to uh, study ancient rocky seashore, and he recognized that there are not too many. While I was interested to film in some uh, Jurassic uh, area of Europe, so I was talking with a Jurassic expert uh, on the topics uh, of stratigraphy, and he could remember any, uh, any uh, real rocky seashore uh, in Mesozoic time. And uh, we're not talking about uh, round reliefs or uh, it can be a, a rocky fault uh, in, in, in a tectonic setting. We're talking about a, a rocky surface with the real differential erosions. It's always interesting to watch these documentaries on dinosaur with these 3D animations. Uh, you see those dinosaur running in those a uh, set of rocky landscape and uh, rocky seashore. But uh, you wonder if these uh, earth scientist consultant were aware of uh, this paradox of landscape. Our modern uh, unconformities are right now under the sea. Uh, it's why we have to film underwater. These rocky surfaces drown under water and buried under new sediment deposit are quite different than the ancient unconformities. Maybe geologists are just not enough trained to read the rocky seashore alone, unconformities, or we're, maybe we're not able to understand well what was an ancient carbonate ramp or carbonate platform. We don't have too much example today. The smoking guns is surely these strange basal conglomerate capping these unconformities. Uh, they are quite different than any shingle beach we have today along our rocky seashore or even very different than uh, uh, riverbeds of uh, pebbles. Sometimes we wonder if we should call these surfaces uh, crypto uh, unconformities. Uh, as we move on with these documentaries, we, you will see much more. Uh, there's already a lot in the pipeline. Uh, and uh, also we want to uh, continue to receive inputs from uh, geologists and geomorphologists around the world. Mm -hmm.